What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome accessory for the Raspberry Pi 5. And this is something I've been waiting on for a little while. Now I'm sure we're going to see more companies release more accessories for the Pi 5. But it's kind of been a bit slow when you compare it to how fast they put out stuff for the Raspberry Pi 4. But nonetheless, we've got a lot of companies out there pumping out products for the Pi 5. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the best active cooling case that I've tested so far for the Pi 5. Known as the Argon Neo 5. If you're into the Raspberry Pi scene at all, you're probably familiar with this company. This is from Argon40, and they did release some really awesome cases for the Pi 4. This is their first to market for the 5, and on paper, this looks like a really nice case. It does incorporate active and passive cooling. It's got a dedicated power button, and all of the external I.O. and internal I.O. for the Pi 5 is accessible while this is inside of the case. It's also got a micro SD card cover on it, so uh, you can actually cover that right up. And overall, this should add a little bit of protection for your Raspberry Pi 5, plus some really awesome cooling capabilities. And once I pull this off, you can see we do have a fan included. And once we get the Pi in here, we can take a better look at how everything's accessible. This can be just kind of set on top if you want it to. But the main body of the case is constructed of aluminum. Bottom here is plastic, comes with some accessories like screws and thermal pads. Actually, really nice looking case, very sleek, and everything internally is labeled, so you won't get anything confused. Really nice little setup here, and I believe we've got enough aluminum here to just use this as a passive cooler, but through my test, I will have this fan active. It won't be on all the time because Raspberry Pi OS for the Pi 5 does have all of this incorporated. You can actually go in and adjust the thermal points if you want to, but I'm going to leave it at the stock settings. This does come with thermal pads, our SD card cover, some rubber feet, and all the hardware we need to mount the Raspberry Pi. And in the instructions, what we need to do here is actually put one of these thermal pads on the CPU, and the other pad is going to go on the PMIC chip. I don't see a reason you couldn't add extra pads here for the RAM if you wanted to, but it's really not going to affect performance. These two spots are where the most heat is generated with the Pi 5. And of course, since we can bring the clock up on the Pi 5 to around 3 GHz, we will be testing that out also just to see what happens here. Installation, super easy. I've just installed those thermal pads. We're going to grab the Pi 5 and the case. It's going to slot right in here. Four screws are going to hold the Pi in place, and we're actually going to put the bottom half of the shell on and put the screws in through that. So in turn, it holds the bottom on and the Pi in place. With that finished up, I'm going to go ahead and route this fan cable. They've actually added a little more than we really need here, but I think we can make it look pretty good inside. Several different ways you could do this, but I wanted to kind of make it look neat, and I think this works out just fine. A couple other things here. It does come with those rubber feet, so it won't slide around on the desk, and we can always just use this aluminum top cover here on it like it is, or we can install the two extra screws. If you know you're always going to be in here accessing the GPIO, then you might want to leave these out. But I'm going to go ahead and install them real quick. And once it's finished up, it looks pretty nice. Not a bad looking case at all. We do have that power button over here, which makes contact with the power button that's built into the Raspberry Pi 5. Access to our USB Type-C, dual HDMI over on the side, USB, Ethernet. Everything can be plugged in, not a problem blocking anything off. But now we need to see how this thing performs. If you're familiar with the accessories available from the official Raspberry Pi Foundation, then you know we do have an active cooler that you can pick up along with their Raspberry Pi case. I'm going to be facing this off against that and no cooler at all. Now I do recommend using a cooler with the Raspberry Pi 5, especially if you want to do some overclocking. But, you know, I've got the active cooler here from the Pi Foundation and the Argon Neo 5, which actually comes in at only $19 over on their website. I'll leave a link in the description. I want to see if it can beat out the active cooler from the Pi Foundation. Okay, first up, we've got some idle temps using the stock CPU clock of the Raspberry Pi 5. I do 10 minute runs with everything that I test here and give it sufficient time to cool down completely. At idle, with no cooler, this does jump up to 62 degrees Celsius. With the active cooler from the Pi Foundation, 58 degrees Celsius. And with the Argon Neo 5, we're at 56. So a bit cooler, and I suspected that we'd have a cooler temp here, given that we do have more metal to kind of absorb more heat. Next, we've got a stress test using stress on the Raspberry Pi 5. Stock CPU clocks a 10-minute run. With no cooler, this does hit thermal throttle at 79 degrees Celsius. I believe it's set at 80. 
You can go in and adjust this if you wanted to, but you know, I would recommend around 80 degrees. We did hit that with no cooler, and I knew it would do so. The active cooler does an amazing job by itself at those stock CPU clocks, only hitting 58 degrees Celsius, but the Argon Neo 5 came in a little lower at 56. Personally, I don't ever run my Raspberry Pi 5 at the stock clocks. I actually do an overclock to 3 GHz on the CPU and 1 GHz on the GPU. You definitely want a cooler on the Pi 5 when doing overclocking. And the Pi Foundation's active cooler is more than enough for this 3 GHz overclock because after a 10 minute stress test, we only hit 68 degrees Celsius and the Argon Neo 5 hit 67. I actually thought it would be much lower than this, but I mean, either way you look at it, when overclocking or stock clocks, the Pi active cooler or the Argon Neo 5 is going to do just fine. What it's really going to come down to in the end is the look and feel. I mean, would you like to have the stock Raspberry Pi 5 case with that active cooler? You could definitely set that up, or you could go with the Argon Neo 5. Personally, I like the look of the Neo 5 a lot better. I think it's going to protect it a little more because we do have a full aluminum case here. And thinking about the price, the Argon Neo 5 is $19 over on Argon 40's website. If you want to go with the Pi Foundations case along with their active cooler, it's only going to come out to around $15. So the Argon Neo 5 is coming in $5 more expensive, but you do get that full aluminum case. But remember, in the end, it's up to you. I'm just glad to see new accessories for the Pi 5, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will leave links in the description to Argon 40's website in case you want to learn more, maybe pick one up. If you've got any questions about this case, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.